Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. Today we are going fat bike packing. I mean, someone Linna in a completely new area for me riding these trails for the first time but the distances are quite short today and tomorrow I have a map with good GPS trail that I drew for myself and the main idea for these two days is to Enjoy outdoors, as always, but perhaps the main point is that I'm testing some new bikepacking gear. I've done three bikepacking trips in total with that bike. All of those were with my old bike and I've never had any bike packing specific equipment and now I finally decided to invest in some oh this is wet and muddy but then again I'm on a fat bike so it's not a problem I did not expect these trails to be so wet because this summer has been extremely hot or Unusually hot actually, but here I am in completely flooded forest and trails, which of course means that it is filled with mosquitoes and I am being absolutely eaten alive. Uh, and only antidote is to go faster good signs all around because during uh, winter this is cross-country ski trail and I guess that's mainly oh that's the main purpose of this trail so it's not super ideal for summer use but then again I have a fat bike so I shouldn't be complaining. There we go. No problem. First lean to of this trail. Kuikan Kolo. Nice sheltered place. The pond that I passed is just over there, so interesting choice to build this here and not by the shore. But now I must add some more bug spray because pff, this is getting ridiculous. I'm not going to stay here any longer. I just wanted to see this lean to and in fact, during these two days, I'm going to visit a total of three different lean to shelters. Added some bug spray. Hopefully it will do the trick. Now, back on the trail. And I think I mentioned something about the bags, but let's leave that to the campsite as well. So rocky. Roots.
and again it is wet Uphill, an almost non-existent trail. And at least there's some perks. Hmm. Oh. A few wild strawberries and oh. walking the bike. Six kilometers to the today's destination. Downhill for once. <laughs> and then steep uphill, of course. Uh, well, that didn't last long. This trip isn't just a test for these bags, but also a test for myself and this bike, because I want to see what kind of terrain I can traverse with this fat bike in this loadout. Of course, road like this, I could pedal through with my gravel bike, no problem. But since this bike also has front suspension, I want to see how it works with this loadout. Tervastupa, that's my destination. Four kilometers to go. Something happened, my bag fell off of this Versa cage, it started hitting its tire. Well, that's an easy fix. This was one of the last minute compromises I had to do because I have ordered the Ortlieb seat bag, the bigger one, but it didn't make it in time because during midsummers, of course, Finnish Post didn't deliver or do anything else. So I don't have the seat back. It's waiting for me in the post office. So I had to improvise. And uh, looks like I need to watch for some heavy rocks and ditches and things like that. Might bounce this bag off. I should have used two straps, but now I know. Oh, wow. 1.2 kilometers, I guess. The final stretch of today's journey is then again a bit more off-road. Now this is the kind of trails I can Imagine myself doing with this fat bike packing setup. Not too ridiculous, but still something that the where the front suspension does help and where I wouldn't come with my gravel bike. Damn, it's hot. It's so hot. Huh. Huh. Duck boards, long ones. At least my tires are so wide that they don't fall into these cracks. Still wide enough. Oh. 
Ooh. Made it. Oh. Oh. All right, so here I am. Tervastupa. Well, Tervastupa is actually up there. Here's sauna. And that's also free to use for anyone. There's public sauna every Wednesday at six o'clock. So less than three hours. I'm definitely going to go there. Ah, look at this weather. Almost completely cloudless. I'm guessing close to 30 degrees. Ridiculously hot. Some people love it, but for me, not my favorite season to go and do any outdoor activities because of the bugs and the heat. But this place looks quite nice. Now all I have to do is find some type of um, flat-ish ground to set up my tent. I was thinking that maybe I could go and find a way up there or something. To set everything up and then just start relaxing and waiting for the sun. I think I found a good place for my tent. Not being freestanding, I need some soft ground to peg it down. And that's probably the best and the only spot to do that. And as a bonus, there is a permanent hammock here. And I swear, I did not know about this. If I had known about this, I would have probably just taken my tarp and tried to spend my first ever night in a hammock. <laughs> but this is just a nice bonus. Bonus for now. And at least it's a bit windy here. So the bugs aren't that bad. But before setting up the Mini Peak XL, let's take a look at the bike and the backs first, as I promised. So starting from the back, this is Topeak Versa Cage. I've had a pair of these for a few years now. So that's nothing new. And then here's the Marine Corps Stuff Sack Max Sack. And I've made actually a video review about this. And in it, I mentioned that I bought two of these specifically for bikepacking use. But since I've got these, I've been using them on all of my trips. So. They have been definitely worth the investment. In here, chains of clothes, warm clothes, jackets, things like that. And top here, on top, uh, my cooking pot and everything cooking related in it. Here's just a camp towel. Down here, this is probably the cheapest frame bag available in Finland. Uh, roughly 50 euros. It's waterproof. But it is so incredibly tiny that I could just barely fit all my um, bike maintenance and repair stuff plus a first aid kit is in here. That's my normal first aid kit that I use when packpacking. Down here, uh, just some fuel for the stove. And then most of the stuff is happening up front. So this is the bigger 2021 Ortlieb handlebar bag. And it could be still extended, made quite a bit bigger, but because it's compressible, it has a air valve. I'm gonna get quite a bit of stuff in here. So inside of this is the Lux Outdoor Mini Peak XL tent, my summer sleeping bag, um, mosquito or like a bug tent. Uh, then of course all the uh, stakes, pole for the tent and uh, Katadrin Hiker Pro water purification pump. In front, my old Thermarest Z Lite Sol and my five years old 
solar panel. I originally bought this panel for like longer, let's say five to seven days and longer backpacking trips. But since then I've invested also to a bigger power bank. So I haven't been using it as much, but I believe it's 15 watt panel. And if nothing else, it's feeding my phone all the time. So at least the phone doesn't uh, go out of battery as fast. So of course these kind of portable uh, like camping, hiking solar panels aren't that powerful compared to the needs of modern smartphones, but it does help a bit. And since it's relatively lightweight, it doesn't take any like additional space or anything. So why not? And down here, I just have my bigger tripod for filming. I ended up having to put quite a bit of stuff in the backpack, which I would have had anyway with me because of the water bladder, but most of the stuff that's now in there will in future be then in the seat pack once I get it. But now let me set up the camp and let's talk a bit more about bikepacking and gear and stuff in general before heading to sauna. So here it is, shelter for tonight. I just happened to get this pyramid shaped mosquito tent from mother-in-law for free. She didn't have any use for it anymore and decided to give it a go this morning. So I got this um, day before yesterday and now this is the first time testing it with or actually using it with this tent. And as you can see, it droops down quite a bit. So I just need to add some loops back home that attach to these these things and I can get a lot more space. Of course, it's still floorless, so uh, bugs can get down there. But um, it's still better than nothing and it doesn't weigh a lot because it doesn't have doors or floor. So in that sense, it's, it's a nice, uh, simple ultralight setup. It's made by Freelufts and it costs roughly 20 euros or so. We'll see. I do have a mosquito, like a bug head net, um, which I will use if it gets too crazy with these friends that I seem to have quite a bit. <laughs> but other than that, oh, camp is set up. I still have two hours before it's sauna time, so I was thinking to go down there by the shoreline and have a drink or two. Give peace. Well, it's not a lot colder than what I have in my hydration bladder, but it's a bit colder. And I'll take it. Although this trip is quite short in terms of both time and kilometers. This is, like I've said, mostly about testing out gear and also that bike with this loadout but in fact I'm going to do a bit longer three day bikepacking trip in one and a half months or actually not even that less than that bit over a month month's time I'm doing it with two friends of mine three days but we are doing it with gravel bikes so I have two bikes fat bike and a gravel bike and in my opinion if you live in Finland you if you buy one of those, fat bike or a gravel bike, you're pretty much set. Gravel bike is so much more useful and fun compared to a road bike. And then again, fat bike is good all around bike throughout the year, all seasons. So yeah, doing a bit 
longer bikepacking trip soon-ish. And I'm using exactly the same gear. So although I have two very different kind of bikes, I'm not going to get two sets of bikepacking gear or anything like that. Most of the stuff, or actually everything else I have here is what I would use normally when I go camping or hiking. Only specific things for bikepacking are the bags themselves. And that's it. So I try to keep my kit as versatile as possible. And so far I'm pretty happy about it. Good info. Camping ABC. Drink, drink, eat, minimize suffering. Unfortunately, on my trips, I cannot always <laughs> do all those things, but I try to do those. It's valid advice. Definitely during this trip, extremely important to stay hydrated. Looking nice. I'm liking this idea of a mid-trip sauna already. <laughs> I always go to sauna after my trips, but in the middle of it, hmm, I might have to try to incorporate this thing to more trips in future. That sauna was great, and so was swimming feeling excellent and very refreshed with <laughs> clean clothes on and had to put this jacket on as well just because of these bugs. I strung up a clothesline so my cycling clothing wouldn't stink as badly <laughs> tomorrow morning. And now I think it's time to find a nice spot from down there somewhere and make some dinner. It's already 10 past 7, so about time to do that. Good looking evening coming up. I've filled up water bladder for tomorrow. I just have to say that this Katadin Hiker Pro, although it is bulky, it's just very handy because it's so fast and it's kind of no-nonsense approach to water filtration. For dinner, some tactical food pack, mashed potatoes and bacon. And as always, Good idea to beefen it up with some Kuivalia Kundi beef jerky. Never go wrong with that. But to be honest, almost any food in this setting with these views would probably taste really damn good. I think I'm going to leave this open like so. Even if it would sprinkle a bit of water during the night. Well, first of all, it's quite easy and quick to close maybe one side down. But I will sleep probably quite far back there diagonally. So the rain is not a problem. I will much rather have this increased airflow and being able to look at these views than to be like protected from heavy storms or anything when they are not likely to happen. And before closing things up for tonight, I will want to show you 
one of the crucial pieces of gear that you need to have when hiking or backpacking in Finland during summer and that is a good tube scarf. Not because it would be cold during the night, but this is the only way to get some true darkness in the middle of summer. Oh yeah. I guess that's all for today. Let's see what tomorrow brings us. Good night. Good morning. It's already half past nine, so I guess that means that I slept extremely well and my sleeping mask did work. Haven't had breakfast yet because I was thinking that. Remember, yesterday I mentioned that there are still two lean to shelters to visit today, so I figured why not? go now to the first one and have breakfast than there. The weather seems a bit cloudier today, so I don't think this solar panel has much of use, but this is also a handy place to not just charge things, but to keep this solar panel here in general. first lean-to isn't that far away, I just have to find the correct trail to get there. I think this might be it. What a fun trail to start today's journey. Oppa. Wet. It's a bit windier today. Yep, and somewhere up there is the lean to where I'm heading. Still some ways to go. Maybe a kilometer. <laughs> the trail uh, might be slowing me down though quite a bit. So Tervas Tupa, 2.2 kilometers, that's where I came from. And Mustalambi is actually the last lean-to shelter that I'm going to check out. But now this trail forks and I'm going to the left a couple hundred meters. I need to backtrack to this same place then after breakfast, but at least I know what's in here now. <laughs> Not for bikepacking. <sighs> so here we are, Golla Lean Two.
the trails that I've been riding, as well as Tervastupa, the place I stayed last night, are upkept by a local association called Olavin Retkeilijat. And this is the only lean-to in the area that isn't managed and maintained by them, but this is instead built and handled by Savonlinnan Reserviläiset, which is the local reservist association. And I figured since this is not too far from my main trails that I would come here and check this place out as well. It says there that it is in public use, which is quite nice of them. But I'm not using any firewood or anything, I'm just using this as a bit of a rest stop in the middle of this morning. For breakfast, pretty standard stuff. One deciliter of oatmeal, one deciliter of protein powder, using yesterday's tactical food pack bag as my bowl for this. Don't judge me. It's a handy way of not having to do any dishes. And for coffee, looks like we have Nescafe Classic 3-in-1. All right. I don't like quick coffee and I don't like milk coffee either, but this is just what I happen to have left over from some reservist exercises, I believe. And then Grandos, soluble coffee, straight from Germany. I might have put too much water in this one, but pro tip, always put too much water in your outdoor meals. You need that fluid inside of you. Quite sweet. While I'm waiting for my breakfast to cool down, I figured I would share with you all a little story that, although this is only my fourth time bikepacking with a fat bike, I actually did my first bikepacking trip back in 2012. So what's that now? Nine years ago. And only back then I didn't know that it was called bikepacking. And I don't know if anyone knew that it's going to be called bikepacking. But then I cycled with my very standard uh, kind of front suspension city bike from Jyväskylä to Pieksämäki to Juba, and then somewhere after that I slept in a lean-to shelter and that was 170 kilometers first day and then I continued to Puumala and Ruokalahti, so roughly 100-110 kilometers I think the second day, with pretty much no experiences in that kind of bike touring or bike packing or anything like that. It went quite well. <laughs> I did, I think, three, like one day, 100 kilometer trips with the loadout just to see if I would have the strength and endurance to pedal with it. I had rear rack and just old German army backpack on the rear rack and then a very small backpack with water and some essentials and that's it. So no bikepacking type of stuff, very lightweight summer loadout. Um, in that sense. And I kind of envy myself or my past self because there's no way that I could do 170 kilometers or even I would say 100 kilometers would be pushing it with my uh, with my back. My lower back is, is you cannot take those those kind of distances anymore. But yeah, when going to that bit of a longer bikepacking trip then in bit over a month's time with my gravel bike, I think that will bring up some memories cycling around Saima and doing it with a more similar bike than what that beast there is. Yeah, just goes to show you that anyone can do what is now called bikepacking. You don't need fancy bike for it or fancy bags for it. And I've been seeing more and more of those bikepacking videos and, and, and pictures and so forth happening in Finland. So 
I think the boom is definitely here. And also, I couldn't get that seat or leave seat pack anywhere from Finland. It has been continuously sold out from all stores throughout the spring. Whenever the new batch came in, I was always too slow to purchase it. So that's why I had to order it from Germany. I bought the rest of those bags or those two bags from Finland, luckily enough. I'm expecting to see a lot more things happening around bikepacking in Finland. I suspect that many national parks will start to adjust their trails or adding new trails and making more bikepack friendly destinations. And I don't mind. I, this will definitely not be my primary way of camping. But just another nice addition. And who knows, when the dog is old enough, I might do some bikepacking with him. After looking at the map and looking at this weather and these clouds, I decided to alter my route a bit. I'm not going to the last link to shelter, but instead I'm going to push forward, hoping that I will hit a bit bigger trail soon-ish. <laughs> of course, I have no idea what is to expect, what's going on over there beyond this lake. Maybe it is single track, maybe it's super technical, hard to go through, I don't know. But I wish that if there is some of that, at least there is not a lot of it, so I can get to faster trails a bit sooner. Nice looking little lake, no doubt. <sighs> Climbed on top of this pretty much straight up, then maybe 50 meters of nice pedaling, and now super steep downhill. In fact, there's actually stairs, huh? And then it's pretty hard to see from this, but according to my map, I will turn right and start climbing on top of quite a big hill. So we'll see how that goes. But first we need to get down there. Do bike back in, they said. It will be fun, they said. <sighs> This is what I'm seeing, and of course it looks like nothing on camera, but it is super steep. <sighs> Thank God for bicycle brakes. Oh. up must go down hopefully I can shake these mosquitoes Ooh, two. Not much, much of a trail to follow, really. For example, now. Maybe this way. There are some planks underneath me, so I guess some type of a trail should go here somewhere. There's at least another one. I've been completely just following the map because I haven't seen a trail at all. Now, this looks a bit more promising. Uh, made it to a bit bigger 
well not even a trail but a road I would say <sighs> which means that I can finally get away from the mosquitoes <sighs> In those wet and dark spruce forests there's more than enough of bugs that want to eat you Finally back on gravel. Ooh. And as I am back on gravel, it means that this adventure is about to come to an end. Or has this really been an adventure? Since distances have been quite short and I've had continuously a good map and a GPS in front of me. Let me know in the comments, does this qualify <laughs> as an adventure? But my name is Joel, you have been watching Tavel Outdoors and at least I have been thoroughly enjoying getting back in touch with fat bike packing. I will see you all in the next one.